Hello everyone, we're going to start adding a little bit of colour to your work this week and a little bit of pattern. So you should have your image saved in uh, sketches from last week. So let's have a little look and I'll find mine on sketches. So this is my composition that I was working on last week and um, I have put a box around it so you may want to start by putting a nice big sack, thick black box around it and I have tidied mines up. A few things I need to add, um, I'm going to add on some um, stems to my flowers so I'm just going to draw them in in black and this background I've got in here I put it in with a pencil line uh, I'm not so sure that it will flood so the tools you're going to need uh, first of all we'll be needing the roller to fill our shapes we'll be needing the ruler and first of all we're going to start by drawing a little bit of pattern so I want to be on pen and I'm going to do a stripey pattern on my tablecloth so with the ruler same thing as before you guide it with your I'm going to create some horizontal stripes which I'm going to make look as if they are got a little bit of perspective in them and getting wider as they're coming towards us that creates the illusion of depth in the painting so do that you can create any pattern that you want so just be mindful that when you fill your shape like this one here I've got a gap okay so and then I can fill my shapes with colours. If you want to do a freehand uh, shape, then you can just use the um, craft knife and you could cut and create some shapes freehand. Okay, so if you just wanted to sort of make some patterns, random patterns, you can do it that way, obviously, with any colour you want to work with. Okay, now when you're adding colour, when you're adding pattern, we want you to think about a colour palette. Try and stick to either a cool colour palette or a warm colour palette. So on the warms, we've got pinks, reds, oranges, yellows and all the colours in between. Cool colours, blues, greens, verging onto purples. So I'm going to stick with the pinks here and come off my ruler. And in this drawing here, it'll only go into certain areas because of the grey tones, but I quite like that effect. So if you've got that shaded in technique on your object, it'll have to be magnified quite large before you can fill in individual shapes. Obviously, I don't want to do every single tiny little one of these because it'll take forever, okay? I've got a general tint of pink over it, which I'm quite happy with, and in there, okay? Remember to double tap if you want to undo. So I've got a little bit, and I'm gonna keep that shading in here. And, and I'm gonna start adding a little bit of tone in these shapes, okay? Now, I've got a gap somewhere, so you need to undo it. You can either undo it or uh, go over your lines with a darker line, an outline, and it won't flood as much. I think I'll go back in and do my petals and try and stick to. Remember, if you want more colour ranges, I'm going to go more into the reds. I want to modify and put in some nice colours in here. It's up to you how far you want to go with it. Um, 
and how detailed you want to be with it. If I go on to my roller, I get different tones of that colour, which I'm, I am wanting. That's maybe a bit too dark. So maybe about here. Yeah, that's much nicer. And I can work within a range of tones. Just adding it. Okay. So some of these shapes are not filled. I just have to undo and build up my colour. Okay, and go to a different tone, kind of in between. It's nice to work with three tones. If you're using a colour, if you're doing a cool colour, try and use three tones of that colour. And of course, if you want to go in and add all fine, fine, fine detail, you can use the spray gun or you can go in and work on it by hand. So I've got a slightly darker tone here. I can go in and I can add some shading. I've just on the pencil here. So I can add a little bit more realistic rather than two dimensional color. I'm put, thinking about a little bit of shading in my petals, okay, to create more realism, okay. So try and think about, I'm sticking to a colour scheme here, um, of warm colours. So I'm going to move on to my background here and my tablecloth. I don't think my scissors need anything because they are a metallic colour already. But um, I'm going to change these. Uh, this is quite a nice tool here, is to use this tool where you can get solid shapes and you can create a kind of polka dot pattern. So once you've got it the size you want, you just click the tick, yeah, and then you can cut and paste it out and copy it. So you can cut and paste it out and duplicate it. Remember to tap to duplicate it and to tap where you want it to go. And you can create a pattern. Okay, so I, I probably need to resize my circles for the next row down. So let me just enlarge that. And duplicate it. Okay, and double tap. Okay, that's how you get it to stay. Okay, so I can create a pattern like that. So I'm just going to take that all away. Okay, back to that. I quite like using the freehand one and sticking with doing freehand random shapes. So I think that's what I'll do and I'll just build up a pattern on here. It's quite nice with one colour overlapping another colour because I've gone for really pale tones. But I'm staying within my colour palette. Okay. So background, you can either use a big brush. Um, this one's quite a nice one, it's a watercolour one. It'll give you nice pale colours and a splash technique like that, um, which you can then of course go in and rub out the edges and take away the edges here using the rubber, move on to the big one and just neaten that up round about my edge okay. quite a nice effect with the watercolour brush I don't have to do that because I want to be on pink so I can put in some nice kind of 
effects in the background there. Another thing we want you to try and include is to think about the cast shadow. That's the last thing I want you to think about. So for the cast shadow, I'm going to enlarge it. Think about the direction the light's coming. If you look at it here, it's light on the left hand side, it's dark on the right hand side. So the shadow is going to be going to the right. So that's where I'm going to try and put my shadow in. Cast shadow using a little bit of spray gun. Uh, two ways to do it. You can use a spray gun and just add it in. Um, you can darken it a little bit. Or another way to do it is to use a pencil and just to draw it and add some directional lines on it and just let them taper away. That's quite a nice way to add a shadow and build it up that way. It's obviously more accurate. Okay, have a little look at it, pinch it down. Yes, it's starting to look like a shadow. And of course, the scissors will need a little shadow under them too. So you can do that with the shadow of the scissors. So, on your tabletop, you need to add some pattern to make this look like a tablecloth or a table surface, such as wood. You need to add colour and pattern. And you need to add cast shadows, okay? If you just let it taper away, sometimes you can do that with the um, So I'm going to change back to the pencil and just let it taper away. Okay. So it's starting to look a lot more realistic. Okay. And I'm going to continue with building up the pattern and adding the colour to my flowers. And then once you've done that, can you please submit your work? Okay. We're looking for a nice finished composition um, with a tabletop and your three objects that you've done in the drawing tasks. Okay, good luck everyone. Bye-bye.